Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at a few of the many concentration units that have developed in chemistry. Our overall objective is to perform calculations involving molarity, molality, percent by mass, and mole fraction. Chemists use a huge number of different concentration units. Molarity is something you learned in Gen Chem 1. There's a related concept called molality. We often talk about percents, parts per million, parts per billion. There's also something called normality that can be used when you're talking acids and bases and doing titrations. A new one for me a few years back when my father was hospitalized was osmolarity. I was hanging out in his hospital room and very bored and actually started reading the uh, IV fluid bag that was hanging up on the little pole thingy. And it was, it was talking about the solution in the bag in terms of osmolarity. Well, it turns out that has to do with maintaining the appropriate osmotic pressure so that the fluid doesn't cause any lysing of cells as it enters somebody's body. Um, and then we also have this thing that you've already seen in Gen Chem 1 with the uh, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure that's called mole fraction. So I think these last two examples of osmolarity and mole fraction kind of point us in the direction of why chemists have so many different concentration units. All of these units are simply expressing for a given amount of solution how much stuff is dissolved up in it, but in all sorts of crazy different units. And it just happens that in different branches of chemistry, different aspects of these concentrations become important. And so every little field or every special application in chemistry has reasons why a particular way of defining concentration makes sense and is important. So the good news for you is that I'm not going to expect you to know all of these. The concentration units we're going to work with are molarity, molality, percent, and mole fraction. And you've already seen two of these in molarity and mole fraction. And percent is something that should be very familiar, maybe just not applied to solution concentration. So that really only leaves one new one, which is molality. To review molarity, it is defined as the moles of solute per liter of solution. The solutions that are made to a very precise molarity are made with volumetric flasks, which are illustrated here on the left. Volumetric flasks are designed to hold a precise amount of solution, and so there is only one marking on them. That mark appears on the neck of the flask, and when the bottom of the meniscus of the solution hits that mark um, on this far left volumetric flask, the volume of that solution is exactly one liter or 1,000 milliliters. The, uh, an equation that is often accompanied, um, that often accompanies the definition of molarity is the dilution equation. And dilution is often used to prepare solutions of a given molarity. And that says M1V1 equals M2V2, where the ones describe your solution before you do the dilution, and the twos describe your solution after the dilution is completed. This example asks us to find how many grams of glucose must be dissolved to make exactly 250 milliliters of a 0.15 molar aqueous solution? And we're also given the molar mass of glucose. Okay, so we need a 0.15 molar aqueous solution. Let's look at the definition of molarity. Molarity is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Now, I'm not seeing grams anywhere in there but I do see moles, and since we have the molar mass, we can easily relate moles to uh, 
grams. So I'm going to rearrange this equation a little bit. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by liters to get rid of that denominator. And that gives me that the number of moles of the solute will be equal to the molarity of the solution times its volume in liters. I'm going to pull a fast one here and substitute V for volume um, in place of the liters of the solution. The moles in a sample of a solution will be given by its molarity multiplied by its volume. The molarity that we have is 0.15. The volume that we have is 250 milliliters, but if we're working with the definition of molarity, that should be specified in liters. So if we take 0.15 and multiply it by 0.25, we get 0 0.0375 moles. Now I really should round this to two sig figs, but I'm going to carry the extra sig figs through to the very end of the calculation and round at the end. So we have 0 0.0375 moles of glucose, and we need to convert this to grams. So for every one mole of glucose, there are 180.18 grams of glucose. That's just simply the molar mass. So now I'm going to multiply these two things, 0 0.00375 times 180.18, and that gives me 0.675675 grams. I really can only keep two significant figures, so that will round off to 0 0.68 grams of glucose. So if we take 0.68 grams of glucose and dissolve it in enough water to make 250 milliliters of solution, the resulting solution will have a concentration of 0.15 molar. A closely related concentration is molality. With molality, we're going to use a lowercase m to represent it. Remember with molarity, we used an uppercase m. So be careful to do something as you're writing to distinguish a capital M from a lowercase. Molality is given by the moles of solute divided by the kilograms of solvent. So if we're comparing molarity and molality, both of them have moles of solute in the top, but the denominators are very different. With molality, it's kilograms, not liters. And also note that molality talks about the solvent, not the whole solution, just the solvent. Molality is necessary for something known as freezing point depression. It's a colligative property that we will look at later on in this chapter. And this is necessary for the freezing point depression lab in the 1142 course. Let's take a look at a molality example that is very similar to the molarity example that we just worked. This wants to know how many grams of glucose have to be dissolved in 563 grams of ethanol to make a 0 0.025 molal solution. Notice that this is a lowercase m, so this is going to be molality. So molality is given by the moles of our uh, solute divided by the kilograms of our solvent. Well, we are looking for our solute, how many moles that would be. For our solvent, we are given 563 grams. And let's go ahead and convert that to kilograms and move that decimal three spots to the left. So it'll be 0.563 kilograms of ethanol, which is our solvent. To solve this equation for the moles, we're going to take the molality and multiply it by the kilograms. And remember, that's kilograms of solvent. So when we do that math, we're going to have the 0 0.0240 for the molality. The kilograms of solvent were 0.563 kilograms. I really should label that molality. And if we run those numbers through a calculator, we have 0 0.024 times 0.563, and that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.0135. Uh, 
keep the extra sig figs. Um, so there's another one, two at the end of that, and that works out to be units of moles. But we weren't asked for moles, we were asked for grams. So one more time, we're going to use that molar mass. Uh, the molar mass was given on the previous slide. For every one mole of glucose, we have 180 grams. And I do not remember what the decimal places were, so we'll just round that one to 180. And that gives us a final answer of 2.4321 six grams. The numbers in our problem all have three sig figs, so I want to round this to three sig figs, which would be the second decimal place. The next digit's a two, which says round down, so our final answer will be 2.43 grams of glucose. Our next concentration unit is percent by mass. Whenever I think about a percent, I think of it as being a part divided by a whole times 100. In this case, since we're saying it's by mass, we'll use units of grams for both the part and the whole. And the part will be the mass of our solute. So the solute is the piece. And then the whole thing will be the whole solution. Read your problem carefully because sometimes they'll give you information about the whole solution, but other times they'll give you separate information about the solute and the solvent, and you will have to add the mass of the solute plus the mass of the sol solvent to get the mass of the whole solution to go in the denominator. Our next concentration unit is mole fraction. This popped up in Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure back in the Gas Laws chapter. Mole fraction is abbreviated with a capital X, and it's given by the moles of your solute divided by the total moles present in your solution. And just like with the mass percent, sometimes you'll have to add things together to get the total moles of the solution.